suggest that we have a meeting one night very soon. Maybe we can combine it with dinner at Monica and Allen's. My mother's still in town. I don't, um, think that's such a good idea, Tracy. Oh, why not? We can bring Leslie, you can invite Gail, and we can leave the ladies to talk to Mother and Daddy while we go downstairs and have a meeting in my suite. I think it would be better if it was a straight business meeting. We'd get through things a lot more quickly. I'd really like Leslie to feel as if she's part of this whole enterprise, Rick. I mean, it's an important part of your future that concerns her. I uh, agree with Rick. I really see no value in combining business with social affairs. I mean, we all have uh, quite a few obligations that were left undone during the epidemic. Well, I don't understand why everybody's so antisocial all of a sudden. All I am saying is that we should have a meeting one night soon before Mitch and I have to go to Albany, okay? How would tomorrow night suit everyone? It's fine with me. Well, that's a little soon for me, Alan. There are certain things that I do have to get done at home. Yeah. All right, Rick, whatever you say. And I think uh, I'd better leave now. I promised Leslie I'd be home early in the... All right, fine. Uh, everything will wait until the next meeting anyway. All right, until, if we have it. We will have it. I, I'm not going to hang anybody up. This is just as important to me as it is to all of you. We know that. All right, I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, okay. Bye-bye. Well, my dear sister-in-law, I think I owe you an apology. For what? I guess I did underestimate the pressures you were under all those weeks in isolation. Did you? Earlier, I accused you of being touchy and jumpy. Now I see that Rick is just as jumpy as you, and just as much unlike himself. Hello. Mrs. Grant left a note. Um, dinner's all ready for us, and it is. And she cleaned the house from top to bottom, and she ordered fresh flowers. Yes, I know. I see. I can set the table now, and we can eat now if you like, or if you'd rather, we could wait. Leslie, I don't know about you, but I am not really very hungry, and I don't think I can stand here and make small talk about eating and flowers when our life together is in jeopardy. I wasn't making small talk. I was trying to fill the awkward space between us. I'm sure you're as aware of it as I am. Yes, but I would like to do something constructive about it. I mean, all day I have just wanted a chance to talk to you about it. I mean, I had a meeting on a cardiac when I couldn't even concentrate on what they were saying because all I could think about was you running off two days ago and, and saying that you needed time. I did. Well, I understood that. I gave you time. Not that I had much to say about it. And I've waited. And, and I hope you've had enough. Well, I'm not sure how much time it takes to cope with the implications of being married to a man who tells you that he loves you at the same time he tells you how very much he desires another woman but i've done my best i i don't have it even halfway sorted out yet but i realize that there are some important questions to ask and among them is what exactly is our definition of love as i mentioned earlier well if you have any questions i think you better get them out in the open please as I possibly could. But it's very difficult for a woman to... Well, I expect for anyone to face things like that. I know. It's very hard for me to admit this. But, um... After my last therapy session, I walked out of there so full of confidence and hope that I, I couldn't wait to get home, to call you at the hospital, to tell you how I just knew. I didn't know that. Well, because as it happened, I got Monica on the phone, so I didn't leave a message. But I sat up all night, waiting to be able to tell you in person how much faith I had in our future. And then the next morning, I learned that you had spent that night with her. Leslie, that's true. But absolutely nothing happened because of my love for you. But love, you see, you use that word so easily, even now. I'm not even sure that I understand what you mean when you say love. How exactly do you love me, Rick? The way I've always loved you. You love me. 
And yet you found yourself so strongly attracted to another woman, to Monica, that it took a whole night of fighting to control it. I, I don't understand that kind of love. I may never understand it. Leslie, I was honest with you. I think there are very few men alive, no matter how happily married they are or, or how much in love they are with their wives, that they're not at one time or another at least attracted to some other woman. We're not talking about that now. This is not someone who caught your eye on the street or a girl who smiled at you from across a crowded room. This is an attraction that has been going on for years. You told me yourself it was the very core of your whole relationship with Well, you. I cannot change the past. It's not the past, Rick. It's now. It's our present right now. I asked you once if you found me as sexually stimulating as you do, Monica. You will never know what it cost me to ask that. What I realized now was you cheated me with your answer. I told you I couldn't make a comparison of that kind. That was an evasion. I think you finally answered that question the other morning. Leslie, listen to me. Don't answer that. We have to answer it if we be the hospital. Get him. Uh, Rick, it's Steve. Uh, I'm sorry to bother you at home, but I was just wondering if you talked to Jeff recently. No, I haven't, Steve. Well, anyway, they told me downstairs that he'll be on call tonight. I want to talk to him as soon as possible. Thanks, Rick. And again, I'm sorry if I've disturbed you. Well, that's all right. I hope you can reach him. Hello, Steve. Hi, Steve. Hi, Steve. Hi, Steve. Where were we? But I'll tell you where we are right now. At a point in our marriage where I will not be a substitute for Monica. You have never been, and I would never allow that to ever happen. I know you mean that, but I think it's going to depend on me to make sure it doesn't happen. Leslie, I have told you a hundred times that I broke off my relationship with Mona because there was nothing in the future for us. I married you because, because of the... Because I fit your image of what your wife should be. Monica didn't. Monica didn't have the qualities that would allow her to fit that image. But but Monica has changed. I, I can't count the number of times you've told me that yourself lately. Would she now? Whether she would or wouldn't isn't important. I am married to you now. I love you. I have never stopped Please, loving you. don't... Don't let's use that word until we've decided what it is we each mean by it. What do you want? You want to punish me? No. No, never. All I want is a simple answer to a simple question. Do you still want Monica as much as you did that night? How can I answer that? Honestly. Leslie, the... The circumstances that led up to that other night were very unique, almost unreal. And we were locked up in isolation for three, how many weeks together? I mean, I, I don't think those circumstances would ever come together again. We, we found certain feelings that, well, it's not important. That, that couldn't occur again. We, but nothing happened. I didn't allow anything to happen. Neither one of us did anything. Something did happen, Rick. You discovered that your attraction for Monica was as strong as it had ever been, that it had not diminished one little bit in all the time you've been married to me. Well, if you think about it in those terms, yes, maybe something did happen. Some feelings came to the surface. I acknowledge that. I admit that. But it didn't go beyond that point. Nothing happened. There was no action. That's qualifying. That is. Qualifying will not do here. You have got to answer that question. Do you still want Monica? You better get that. But afterward, Rick, you are going to have to answer that question. Because our future really does depend on it. 